Okay, I'll do it. Honestly, I've been putting off this review for as long as I can because um, basically nothing happens in this episode. Uh, nothing! You've got nothing! Nothing! The correct title for this episode should seriously be Uh, Stuff and Uh, Things. Uh, Balrog! Balrog! Oh, look, it's a Balrog! Look at it, guys! Okay, bye! If this episode was a sandwich, it would be two slices of bland white bread with no meat and just lettuce. That sucks! I paid for this with an hour of my time, and this is all I got? Mm, sorry, sir, we're trying our best. When writing my review for this episode, I constantly had to review my notes because I could barely remember what happened. It's that forgettable. Ugh, yeah. Good job, Prime. Your billion dollar TV show is being forgotten literally seconds after taking it in. I seriously remember what I had for breakfast better than what happened in an epic adventure story set in my favorite fantasy world of all time. Sad. Life is pain, Highness. Now let's get into it. If I miss something, know that it's not my fault, it's theirs. Now oh, look at him looking, laying down like a lion. What are you laying down like that for? The things that I found the most positive about the episode should probably not be considered positive, but I'm gonna count them. One of the best things that happened in this is that Muriel is now blind. How hilarious is that? <laughs> that is absolutely hilarious to me. The writers are just completely elated with themselves because now they're able to check off that disability representation box. You know that they were just jacking themselves off to how many virtue signaling activists gave them pacts on the back for that. It'll literally serve no purpose other than to represent the disabled community. Mark my words. Call me a scumbag, I don't care. That is literally the only reason they did it and nothing else, and it doesn't fool me. They are greedy little bastards that want the approval of other greedy little bastards. You sick f The other really positive part about this episode was that Nori almost died and all of the Harfoots almost got blown up. Yes! The fact that this was the best part about it was that the Harfoot's carts got blown up or whatever uh, really just speaks to how annoying and stupid they have been the entire show. <laughs> Newsflash writers, if your audience is actively rooting for one of your main characters to die, uh, then you did your job very wrong. This doesn't go for just the Harfoots though. Every time the show alluded to somebody being dead from the main cast, I really like perked up and was immediately disappointed when they survived. Yay! an insufferable prick down. Oh, dang it, they survived. Fiddlesticks. Son of a bitch! This show would literally become a 10 out of 10 for me if the writers just decided to kill off all of their main characters. That'd be great. Pull a Rogue One, bros. Nothing would make me happier than to see all of these twisted, retarded, bland, cringy protagonists all die in a horrific way. Just kill them all. They all suck equally. Kill them. And last, uh, two pieces of good, I guess, uh, Peter Mullen makes a really good Dwarf King, I guess, uh, even though his motivations are completely farcical and most of his dialogue makes me want to abort myself. Kill me, I'm here, kill me! He has a cool voice, I guess. Oh, and this Eminem lookalike priestess girl has a huge pair of great personality traits. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I am just so so broken at this point. I really, really, really had to push myself to watch this far into the show, and I haven't even finished it yet! Look up! There's more! The last episode came out like a week ago, and I still haven't brought myself to watch it. Know, guys, that if the videos permanently stop, that is because I blew my own brains out. <laughs> You know that giant pyroclastic flow at the end of the episode 6 that was so dark and ominous and powerful and everybody survived. Literally everyone survived. <laughs> Well, except for that weak-ass Numenorian that I don't even remember the name of. This volcano turned an entire 140,000 square miles of land into a barren wasteland because of its volcanic power, and only one person died from it. 
That is unbelievably stupid. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Every single person would look like this burnt to a crisp pleb. Or dust. But no, instead we just got a few shots of Cheeto Galadriel. Seriously guys, how do you expect us to enjoy the show, much less get invested in it if the stakes are basically nothing? Nobody is gonna die because we need them in the sequels, of course. And you better believe that if we do kill off anyone, it'll be people that have had about two minutes of screen time collectively to try giving you a completely false sense of dread. Oh, and they'll also be straight white males, of course. Of course, of course. Nobody cared that this guy died, okay? It wasn't impactful. It would have made way more sense to kill off Brawny or Airsoft or not Sauron or Muriel, but you won't because you're still banking on them being in season two. Ugh, season two. Kill me, I can't even believe we have to go through all of this all over again in 2024. No! Anyway, the volcano explodey thing from the last episode had no actual impact on the plot, except for that you guys got to reveal the Southlands as Mordor via PowerPoint presentation. What? Really? Wonderful. Your creative capacity is absolutely stunning. A big bag of shit! We know it's Mordor! You don't have to literally spell it out. Give your audience even a grain of trust to understand what's going on, okay? Anyway, what other tripe are we gonna plunge into? Oh, of course. Mithril elfy dwarfy plotline is still, for lack of a better word, retarded. That's retarded. Mithril still doesn't have these stupid magical properties that can make a leaf less deader because we had no idea how to create a dramatic narrative between Elrond and Durin. Not to mention if the magical bullshit I doesn't have the capacity to save the elves from fading into obscurity, which believe me, it doesn't. The fact that Durin the third doesn't want to because he doesn't want to dig? What the hell are you on about? Because it's kind of dangerous to dig. You would rather an entire species just dies off? That is a wall of fame, stupid contrived reason to ensure the extinction of the elves. And people will be like, oh, it's because he knows that there's a Balrog. No, he doesn't. He just doesn't want to dig because it's kind of dangerous to dig, which makes no sense because they're dwarves and they dig. They mine, okay? They're good at their job. I thought Durin 3 was going to be safe from being made into a moron like every other character, but nope, we literally turned him into a psychotic, genocidal maniac. Again? Freaking again! There's not a single character in Tolkien's mythology that will go untarnished by these quacks, and you can count on that. You maniac! Damn you all to hell! Because they have basically rehashing episodes just to pad out the runtime, let me do some rehashing of my own. Mithril being able to save the elves is really stupid. Mithril is literally just an ex machina now. It can do whatever the plot needs it to. Mithril was literally the entire economy of Moria, you dicktards. Mithril has been around for thousands and thousands of years. Galadriel's ring was made out of Mithril. They were mining it for literal centuries, and now you're telling me that it wasn't the expansion of the mines into the deeper and deeper parts of the world that awoke the Balrog. It was a freaking leaf? A leaf? That is the stupidest f***ing thing I've ever heard. How many people did you pay to have read the actual lore of Tolkien's Middle Earth before just deciding to make an actual show out of it? That's my question. Did you hire some intern to literally just Wikipedia stuff and then discounted his findings anyway? Oh, we feel deeply connected to the lore and the world of Tolkien. That is, of course, if... Deeply connected is synonymous with completely oblivious to and downright disregarding of. Congratulations, you're stupid in three languages. Any Tolkien purist saw right through this garbage. It's bullshit doing bullshit for the sake of bullshit. I seriously have no idea how they are going to make all of this make sense. They're just setting themselves up for failure. Not only does your change to the lore disrespect the lore, it creates massive plot holes that you're going to have to circumvent in your story later. And none of us believe you are good enough writers to make it coherent and make sense. You are the kind of people that think throwing water on an oil fire will put it out. Morons. If you thought that break through the lore was bad, just wait. Apparently, there was a Celeborn that Galadriel was married to, but it turns out he is MIA, missing in action, and she hasn't seen him since. What the f***? Oh really, sweetie? So if you're married to Celeborn and he went missing in action, you decided to devote your entire life to tracking down Sauron rather than finding your own freaking husband? 
You don't know if he's dead and you just decided to abandon him? Well, you're a real piece of work, aren't you, Karen Ladriel? You piece of shit! Finding the enemy is more important than your loyal husband. Great. The amount of negative adjectives I could use to describe Karen Ladriel is becoming way too long, my friends. <laughs> what did they do to you, Galadriel? I miss the kind-hearted, warm, trusting, admirable, feminine, beautiful Tolkienian Galadriel I grew up to love. Now we're stuck with this cheap copy that could be replaced by any block of wood and or concrete. How the showrunners completely destroyed your character could be an entire video in and of itself. Half of it would just be a five-hour montage of Morphid Clark making the exact same face for the entire show. Seriously, girl, did you go to the Brie Larson School of Expression? You might as well put on a Darth Vader mask at this point. You suck! All of the stuff that the Harfoots did was just cringe and dumb, as always. Except for the parts where they almost died. <laughs> that made me a laugh. But explain something to me here, please. After helping the Harfoots with their wagon, protecting them from danger, and overall being a massive contributor to the survival of their journey, imagine getting kicked out of the clan because some idiot hobbit got underneath the tree that Knock Gandalf was trying to heal, and it happened to fall on them at that exact moment. Because the tree fell down and almost hit you when you were walking deliberately under it, we now think that Knock Gandalf Gandalf is a threat to all of us? In what dimension of stupidity does that make any sense? He saved your life countless times and now because he was trying to help and you had a friend act like a literal numb nuts and put themselves directly in danger, you shun him and send him away? Are you guys intentionally making the Harfoots the biggest assholes in Middle Earth? It seems like a concerted effort at this point is what I'm saying. That's dumb. You're dumb. It's also again time for us to go through every cheap copy of Jackson's series that was just regurgitated onto the screen to make you want to go and watch a completely superior Tolkienian adaptation. A new power is rising. A new evil is rising. You carry a heavy burden, Frodo. Don't carry the weight of the dead. Do not take the burden of this day upon your shoulders, Theo. There are other forces at work in this world, Frodo, besides the will of evil. There are powers beyond darkness at work in this world. But I cannot see it. I cannot yet see it. Stop. Shut it. What is it? What do you smell? What is it? What do you smell? Save your pity and your mercy! I have no use for it! Do not spend your pity on me, Elf. Save it for our enemies. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! I posted a few of my clips from my videos on my TikTok page. Yes, I have a TikTok, unfortunately. What can I say? They have awesome forging and cooking videos. And one of the clips I posted was showing all of the callbacks to the Jackson films in the first episode, and the amount of blowback that I got from that was insane. People saying stuff like, It's almost like it's from the same source material or something like that. This is satire, right? It's the same world, of course it'll be similar. So you're mad they're appealing to their biggest audience and keeping things people love about the trilogy? Bro, I have the solution to everything you're saying. Don't watch it. Man, I knew the TikTok's audience was dumb, but I really did not know how dumb. <laughs> I'll explain it to you very simply. 
The reason these callbacks are so stupid is because the showrunners are doing it for no other reason than nostalgia bait and brand recognition. Not because it fits in well with the actual dialogue, not because it helps tell the story better, not because they wanted to pay tribute, but because they wanted to associate what you already love with their shitty product. I thought that was obvious. They wanted to capitalize off of the fans of Jackson's series, despite coming out numerous times and saying that they didn't want to be connected to the original trilogy. That they wanted to make something that could stand on its own two feet. Now that's all well and good if you wanted to make your own adaptation with your own creativity, if you literally didn't contradict yourself in every freaking episode. You are so uncreative and bad at adaptation that you just stole dialogue, set pieces, costumes, and animal designs from far superior pieces of media and put it into your own show. People came up with the argument that because it's all from the same source material that obviously it's going to look similar, which is a fair argument, but look similar and be literally identical are two separate things. Tolkien's work of Middle-earth is open to interpretation. You could have made your adaptation unique, but still have the same general spirit of Tolkien's work without botching it up, giving you the ability to be creative and make your show come into its own all by itself. If you just wanted a carbon copy Jackson's trilogy, then just come out and say it. Don't lie to us and say that you're being 100% creative in every decision and then just rip off the trilogy like it's a drunk dude at a casino. This is bullshit! It's dishonest and shows that you guys aren't even creative enough to make something original, but that you want to appear that way anyway. You're uncreative, and every callback doesn't please me like a 15-year-old Star Wars fan. It just infuriates me. Also, if you're going to make your series pay tribute to the Jackson series, then it would be nice if you did some things that actually matter to resemble it in some way. Like, oh, I don't know, make Galadriel into a beautiful, tall, slender, cunning, but caring lady of light and feminine power like Kate Blanchett, rather than an angsty, short, bipolar, toxic bimbo. Or make Elrond into the powerful, commanding, battle-hardened Lord of Rivendell and the actual commander of Gil-Galad's armies, rather than a wimpy, political beta cuck scribe for the king or i don't know make the fucking elves look like fucking elves hey take it easy you decided to choose the absolute worst path and shove in creative choices and dialogue from jackson's trilogy and then decide to take credit for it like it's your baby it's not it's his, and he has more talent and love for the lore than both of you have in your entire bodies times a thousand like I said, next to nothing happens in this episode. Seven hours in. And none of our characters have had character arcs. We still don't know who the main villain is. We are still dealing with conflicts that should have been resolved four episodes ago. And I am no closer to liking any of the main characters. A show that you should actually spend your time on is Chernobyl. That show blew me away. If you want to watch something that will take you on an emotional roller coaster for which there is no recovery and will educate you at the same time, go watch it. It is brilliantly acted, amazingly shot, and beautifully paced. Yes, I did binge through all five episodes of it rather than watch Rings of Power because I needed my faith restored in humanity. As for when episode eight review is going to come out, I don't, I don't freaking know. <laughs> If I can claw myself away from Monster Hunter World long enough to write a review, hopefully soon. But my will is not very strong at this point, guys. I can't take it anymore! I just wanna die! If you wanna play with me sometime, just leave it below in the comments. Let's get together. Let's connect over our hatred of the Rings of Prime. Let me buy you a drink. Let's talk it over, you know? In my last video, all of you guys commented on my cat and said you wanted more of him. Like, quite a few of you did that. So, uh, there he is. His name's Ruxin, and he's like a year old. I named him after a guy, a really sassy lawyer in a TV show called The League, because he is also himself very sassy, and he's also gorgeous. Look at his mane. Look at his mane. He's so pretty, and he's very cuddly, but he's very... He, he's very... <laughs> agitated at the moment i don't know why and then this little guy this little dog over here not actually my dog it's my roommate's his name is woodhouse based on named after the butler in the tv show archer because he looks like he's wearing a tuxedo isn't that right bubby come here sit 
Oh, god boy. God boy. God boy. Anyway, there's some animals in my house. I'm going to let Woodhouse go his own way, but... Woodhouse, can you say bye? <gasps> oh, good job. You just see that? He said bye. He said bye because he's a good boy. Get off. And Ruxin says bye. He says bye with his widow paw. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Bye-bye. I want you to get up now. I want you to get up right now and go to the window and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm sorry I wasn't listening. Ah! Ah!